just a bloke in a bar. What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to Packer Up, boys. It is time. Have a listen. That is right. Ooh, look at that. Yum, yum. Oh, yes. Just a little delicate sip. Ease my way into it. I don't want to go too uh, too soon. There's a big there's a big moment on TV tonight that I have to be a part of and fully zoned in for. Uh, but as always, guys, week of work is done. Or maybe you finish work tomorrow, if it is. Just uh, maybe rec- re-listen to this podcast tomorrow as you're driving home. But uh, enjoy yourself. Finals footy is here. You've worked your absolute ass off all week long. Enjoy the moment. Don't don't stress about Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday coming next week. That's going to be there no matter what. So just enjoy your weekend. Unwind. Enjoy it with people you love and with a case of bloke beer if you like. If not, you don't have to get a case of bloke beer if you don't want to. But if you love beer, grab a case of bloke beer from your, your local. We're in all the independence. I go over it a thousand times. Celebrations, bottle of portals liquor, all that stuff. So grab a case of bloke beer. I've got the great Matty the water boy here. How you going, brother? Man, I am so excited for this weekend this is right. this is do you remember last year week one of the finals we had paraverse eels which was obviously that's Penrith first para turn, sorry Penrith first para i turn, always say paraverse yeah. eels too <laughs> turned out to be the grand final we had that sharks cowboys like golden point yep. game we had canberra upsetting melbourne mm. and we had the sinbin athon south roosters it was the greatest True. week of the year and I, I just i'm praying it replicates from today onwards i'm tell i honestly reckon and i know you probably won't feel this now mm. But even though you would want your team in the finals, is it so good going in to just go, you know what? I don't have to stress about anything. I yeah. could just enjoy the footy. You know what? I actually woke up this morning and I thought this and I was like, you know what, though? I'm not going to say it because I don't want to make it about South because mm. South are gone. Mm. But I am 100% in agreement with you. There is no stress. Yep. Obviously, you'd rather your team in. Yep. But there's no – and obviously, it's a bit easy to say for a team like South who were in it last year. Like, I'm yeah. sure if Tigers, Dragons, Dolphins yeah, yeah. would be different. But yeah. – there's no stress. You get to enjoy no. every moment of the weekend. It's I. You just cannot, want to watch good footy. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And and at the end of the year is where you usually see games that are so called like dead rubbers don't mean anything. We've had enough of them. Now every game matters. So yeah, I, I'm totally in agreement. And like to open up oh, Broncos oh. versus Storm at Suncorp Stadium. It's amazing. But before we get into it. This September, Telstra, in collaboration with the NRL, are hosting NRL Telstra Footy Country Tour. Former and current NRL legends are going to visit remote and regional communities with coaching clinics, club gala days, and prize photo ops with trophies. Kicking off during finals footy, the tour journeys through Queensland, Victoria, and New South Wales, finishing at the 2023 Grand Final at a core stadium. The link for more information of where they will be going and how to register is in the show notes. So massive thanks to you. Thank you to Telstra for jumping on board and partnering with Bloke. Head to the link in the show notes, uh, whether it be Apple, Spotify, or YouTube, for more information and how to register uh, to see the former and current NRL legends when they come around uh, doing coaching clinics, uh, all photo ops, all that good stuff. The show, in the show notes will be the link. Oh, man. Week is nearly done. Have you got basically? I mean, obviously, I watch footy all weekend, take notes and all that stuff, and that would be technically considered work, but it's not really work. <laughs> um, went out this morning to uh, like a dra- the drag racing area of uh, – Anyway, Jayco Jayco uh, Caravans. Okay, um, they're hosting a day, not hosting a day, but they're one of the companies at this day where people go out and buy caravans and all that kind of stuff. Right. Um, and yeah, we had to do a show. Me, Maddie Johns, and Andrew Webster, uh, like our the Morning Glory show, rocked up, pissing down rain. Of course, no one there, freezing our dicks off, and you're just like, wow, isn't it? I, I found it like really, even though Maddie wouldn't think this, but I'm like, yeah. bro, this is like Maddie Johns. And he's just chilling in like some random thing. Mm. Rain's coming down, no one's there, and he's just doing a radio show. It's it's, it's incredible. Yeah. Because like people, most people listening like see Maddie Johns as this absolute god that's just unreachable. Yeah. But like – you know, I've only met him once and that was at the Caxton and I, it's still the best moment of the year for me. Yeah, it's such it a It really legend. is. But it just shows you like it, it, that, you know, it's, there's such a, not a facade because no one, none of the, like no media personalities create that facade. Yeah. But like, 
you would never expect that he'd be just chilling mm. in the rain, nothing doing, doing a, like a great radio show. Um, but yeah, it was it was. <laughs> I tell you what, it did do though. It made me go, mate. How good would it be to get one of these caravans and just travel the country? <sighs> travel the country, yeah. Oh, yeah. It would that, be that's, so good. That, that's the dream one day. Just to obviously going around the world, it's fantastic. But yeah, just going around the country, just visiting all country towns. Yeah. Um, I love I love going through New South. Like I mean, we did the country tour at the start of the year. Mm. Obviously, we we um we hit four of them across New South Wales and, and Queensland. But man, they're countless country towns all around australia that i just love to be able to visit it would be so cool the drive into armadale was so beautiful for yours it was like yeah not for you it's terrible <laughs> for you it took the wrong way <laughs> the drive into armadale just the weather was perfect warm clear day and just the scenery looking out across these just flat long you know roaming like rolling hills but then flat farms with like wheat and that it was so so nice um so yeah, we'll be definitely doing the country tour next year. That's for sure, and hopefully we can make it bigger and better. Uh, but yeah, drove out to um, basically the Penrith Way is about an hour away. Drove yep. back in, uh, mate. What I want to know is is how expensive tolls are getting. Oh, aren't they ridiculous? What do I get? Okay, someone please explain. I'm sure there's maybe one or two people that know because I need to know. Mm. Why am I paying tolls when I already pay taxes? Mm. Tell me why I have to pay for a road to be built when I already pay taxes for that road to be supposedly built. Please. New North Connects, if you want, if you want to skip the Pacific Highway and go straight from the east to the north, you have to pay like 10 bucks, 12, 15, it's crazy. And I want to know why I'm paying for tolls and I'm paying taxes. Like, obviously, there's a bunch of other stuff that get paid for with taxes, which I want to spe – we're speaking about something positive. I want to give a massive shout-out. Going through the public system, you know, with your wife giving birth, makes you so appreciative that we have such an incredible public system set up oh, yeah. where you go in for these hugely expensive procedures and, you know, so dangerous and you need highly trained people and all these people taking care of you. You are so grateful for the government and for Australia that they've got this set up where you can get it done. It was absolutely incredible. Now, some of the nurses may be a little bit <laughs> not nice to me for some reason. I don't even know why. I didn't even do anything. Um, as in, they weren't like openly. They just, I don't know. I just feel like some some of them, not all of them, yeah. again, not all of them. They're just a few. They weren't very caring. Let's just put it that way. They, yeah. were, they were very like by the book, treated you like you were, which I understand. I get it. It's their job. But anyway, just wanted to give a massive shout out, A, to the the hospital that you know did it all um the, the women's royal hospital which was incredible nice and smooth got it all done and you're so grateful to australia and the government that you can just get that done and you don't have to pay it's amazing but let's talk about tolls yeah so sydney is one of the most told cities in the world and i've told that in my mind no, seriously it's ridiculous you know what i do bring back the toll people Oh, Bring it back. That? Throw the coin in. Thanks for coming. Smile. Have a great day. Yeah. Bloody AI and machines, mate, taking over, taking away Ta the toll person's the job. Yeah, bloody yeah. You know, it used to just be the express lane that you got. Now it's the whole lot. You don't get to see the toll lady. She's having a great day just sitting there. And I was used to when I was younger, be like, how do they get out there? Like in the middle yeah. of a highway? Even oh. though it's pretty obvious. But. Yeah. Oh, when you're a kid. Every, everything they is bring back the toll person make me day ever drive with a toll when you were with a toll person or were oh, you in the passenger seat probably probably yeah right yeah but I, I mean i tell you what though you start when you're when you're rolling in you're like oh my god no change yeah <laughs> shit <laughs> shit actually yeah what would you do oh, i wonder what you'd do i think i Maybe think they used to be like look you know yeah. it's 80 cents or it's something. whatever <laughs> just go through if you've got a good toll person you've got a person toll person a bad mm. you know what they probably start taxing you even more Mm. They'd be like, you now you know what? You missed 80 cent toll. And you know what's crazy as well? Yeah. It used to be 80 cents or I something. Know, I know. It's like, what is it, like eight bucks now or something? Yeah, depending on what like road you go on, it can be more it can be double digits now, I'm pretty sure. Jeez Louise. You know what? That's where we went wrong as a country when we got rid of the toll people. Yeah. I That's agree. where the country has just gone <laughs> bloody downhill and we're bloody I tell you what, back in my day. Australia used to be our bloody mateship and free roads. Now it's about 20 bucks of bloody travel. That's not even including your fuel. Oh, and the other thing is when you when you miss a toll, like just say your e-tag's not working, you don't have your e-tag up, then you get charged an extra 10 bucks. Yeah, 10 bucks to send a letter. Yeah. Ten what bucks the hell? An administration fee, they call it. Administration fee. <gasps> Come what? on. What about the thousands of dollars of tolls I've paid in the past? Can that pay for the administration fee? 10 bucks to send an automated letter. Yeah. 
you're kidding. It's a joke. Uh, yeah. yeah, but I would love to know, um, like, if you could, if you could, like, audit every single country's spending mm. from an external company. The problem is, is that you'd never be able to get a non-biased or whatever audit oh, because there's so much power in, in the government. Yeah. But if you could audit every country and see which country is the most efficient at spending his money mm. and also a percentage of efficiency. Like, you know, are we wasting 20% that we could be much better at? You'd have to say probably the, is it the Nordic countries? They'd probably be up there, even though taxes are quite high there, yeah. but they got so much, such a good standard of living over there. Well, I was in Iceland and apparently if you get caught speeding over there, this is kind of kind of a digress, but if you get caught speeding over there, the, the fines are so high because no one else commits any other crime. It's, it's the only way they can make oh, money. Really? Yeah. That does frustrate me is like when you know that revenue is just being generated rather than a safety yeah, situation. Yeah. Like certain situations where cameras are set up speeding that, like you know, it's just there for revenue. Like they put it in a spot. Like for example, I remember, so what they, we used to be able to turn right into our street where we used to live. Yeah. Anyway, so they put a no right turn zone there and it might've been up for a week, maybe <sighs> two max. Right where the no right turns thing is, cops sitting there no, waiting. Serious. And it's just like, bro, come. You've intentionally done this. Yeah. Like you've intentionally gone to a spot where you know people would be in the habit of just turning right because they've been going up for years, mm. literal years, and you're just pinging people for it. Mm. And I was just like, bro, it's just, it's just slimy. That's, grub. That's been grub. Like I'd, I'd get it if you you waited a few months. Yeah. You know, then you could be like, look, you guys should be out of the habit by now. It says no right turn. Yeah. But like to be waiting there a few weeks after it's done, it's like, come on, bro. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what it's like in Queensland, but you know in Victoria, there's no warning signs for speed cameras. Because mm. you know how the, in New South yeah. Wales there has to be warning signs. So you don't, you don't know where the speed cameras are coming up in Queensland. Mm. I mean, in Victoria. See, I don't, I, that doesn't bother me because it's like, you shouldn't be speeding. Well, that's true. And that's, that's coming true. from a guy that, you know, has obviously been fine speeding. Yeah. I don't mind that, but it's just the, you know, the fact that you're, it's almost like a setup. Mm. you know sitting right there yeah, yeah. like just to generate anyway and i'm not hey i'm not anti-cop i you know the cops do an incredible job they do an incredible job every, the thing is like every profession that has like a bad rap on it or whatever i just don't understand that because it's like every profession has bad eggs in it mm. you could go to rugby league you can look at it you could go and look i get certain systems are set up that are you know not the best but i'm so i'm not anti cop but i do hate stuff like that that frustrates me yeah, i'm just like bro it's a little what the hell <laughs> anyway talking about roads the roads to the bloody world cup <laughs> oh yeah rugby nice. union but also a road to a grand final in rugby league oh, um yeah. but don't forget guys uh, on stand, road to a World Cup. Get ready to cheer your team in 2023 World Rugby World Cup on Stan Sport. Kicking off on the 9th of September. The only place to watch every match, ad-free, in 4K, Ultra HD, live and on demand, is on the home of rugby, Stan Sport. Add the Stan Sport package now at Stan Sport. Sorry. Add the Stan Sport package now at stan.com.au slash sport. I cannot wait the Rugby World Cup. As I said, you know, I don't watch much rugby during the year, but when a World Cup comes on, you want to be watching that. It is some of the best sport in the entire world. It really is. You've got the Soccer World Cup, for me personally, and then it's the Rugby World Cup. Yeah. Like, it is something special when it comes along, and it doesn't come along often. Yeah, exactly right. It's Again, I, I'm not the biggest watcher of – like, I don't watch every sport, but – when these big events come along, you dialed in. Oh, and man. I, I, I just love the fact that it's so accessible on Stan if you get the package um, because you can rewind games, you can go back and watch them if you wake up a little bit later. So, for example, mm. I, I think a lot of the rugby game, World Cup games are on later in the morning. Yeah, in the morning, yeah. So the good thing about Stan is you can just wake up, don't check your phone, yeah. and watch the match. Yeah. Whereas back in the day, if it was on like free-to-air or whatever – you couldn't, you couldn't watch do it that unless you've bloody tape recorded tape this. recorder or whatever up anyway then so so the good thing about it is is on demand mm. and that's like something that you probably haven't experienced as much in past world cups like maybe the last one mm. but the fact that it's so easily on demand you just wake up boom put it on it's exciting as and also the ability to pause honestly that's something that i think is underrated in modern sport in today like streaming is the ability to pause and go back hundred i remember as a kid when fox tell iq came in and like the the ability to pause like a show and then wind it fast forward it rewind it during ads was like the world had changed yeah and now we just take it for granted take it for granted but especially in sports because oh, it's live bloody oath, yeah and so 
you know, when I watch it and I can go back, there's so many plays that I want to rewatch again. Or what happened there? What line was run? Who made the wrong error? Was that a penalty? Whereas we take it for granted, but it, it honestly changes your watching experience. Mm. It changes it changes how much information you can take out of a game. So anyway, let's get into it. A eh? best time of the year. It's finals footy. Uh, wow. I mean, tonight's game. It is truly a blockbuster of all blockbusters. It's as it stands, it's the biggest game of the year. Mm. But like by far, it is. I still don't really know who's going to win. There's so many reasons that yeah. both teams are going to win. Oh, I'm so excited. Storm are really the only side that have built such a strong reputation that their reputation is making this game almost a 50-50. Mm. Because when you think about it, Broncos have been the substantially better side all year long. Yeah. And when you look at it on paper, Broncos are a better side. And yet the reputation that comes with that Storm jersey that has been built year on, mm. year out – and also the reputation that Bellamy brings in, the reputation that Munster brings in. For example, everyone's talking about Cameron Munster, and he hasn't even had that big of a year this year. Yeah. yeah. But, but we're we, talking we know, about it because of reputation. Yeah, what he can do in these big, big games. And so that's the thing with this Melbourne Storm side. They're rolling into this game with the weight of history on their side. Yeah. That is something special, whereas I, I would love to see, and, and maybe the Broncos can create an environment where that history is irrelevant, and if it is, that's a really good thing. And I think it, they actually are set up for that because they're so young. But the Melbourne Storm, they're rolling in with all the history. It may buoy them. They're rolling with Bellamy, who knows how to be the Broncos. It is such an interesting game. Because when you look on paper, outside of the spine, like the Broncos, they're a, oh. uh, I wouldn't say substantially better side, but I mean, you look at their forward packs next to each other. Like right now, and I'll get it up. I Look, I know you, you, you say they're not substantially better. I probably would argue it is. I, I think it's... I think besides the spine, especially the forwards, Brisbane blow them away. Well, look at this. Look at this back line: Reese Walsh, Nick Meany, Jess Arthurs, Warbrick. Okay, relatively even. Mm. Stags, Seve. Stags. Ha- Farnworth, Tonamapaya. Farnworth. Cobbo, Coates. Cobbo. Cobbo, just. But you know, yeah. Coates is probably equal. Yeah. So in that whole back line, the only real close one, as in you've got Reese Walsh out and out better, Jesse Arthurs and Warbrook. I'm sure Storm's fans would say Warbrook's better, but they're both relatively new. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I couldn't split them. At the um, Stag, substantially better. Farmworth, substantially better. Cobbo, a little bit better. But yeah. So that whole back line, you've got Brisbane. Spine, obviously, you've got Melbourne, Melbourne Storm. Yeah. Forward pack, Flegler, Kamakamitha. Yep, Flegler. Uh, Walters, Grant, obviously Grant. Grant. Haas, Welsh, obviously Haas. Haas. Capewell, Liero, Capewell, Ricky, Katoa. I would go Ricky. I know Storms fans would go Katoa, but that, I think that's, Ricky. that's a pretty good one. That's a pretty, pretty good matchup. One. And then Carrigan King. Carrigan, obviously. So, like, when you go through that whole side, there's only probably five or six, maybe. But then, but then you get to the bench. You get to the bench. <laughs> You've got Pia Cora versus Eisenhuth, Smoothie versus Garlic, Hetherington versus Nelson, which is huge. Oh, Palacia yeah. and Pappenhausen. So, you could say the bench for Storm is probably yeah, okay, a, yeah. a little bit better. Yep. Um, if you took Pappenhausen out there, you'd say maybe the Broncos. Yep. But out of that starting 13, what you've got, you've got definitely Grant, Hughes. Oh, would you say Hughes is better than Reynolds? No. Nah. Probably even? Probably even, yeah. As yeah. in, I know form-wise you could say Hughes, but Reynolds has been, okay. So you've got definitely better from the Storm side. Grant, Munster. And that's like... That's probably it. Grand Munster are the two players where you'd go, they are, in the starting 13, they are absolutely, definitely better. Now, if you wanted to argue these other players and say, oh, I think he's better. Whereas in the in the Broncos side, when you look at it on paper, Reese Walsh, definitely better. Stag's definitely better. Farmworth, definitely better. Um, look, if you want to argue Cobo Coates, fair enough. I, I would lean Cobo. Uh, then you go Flegler, definitely better. Haas, definitely better. Catewell, definitely better. Carrigan, definitely better. You know what I'm, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah, for Yet, sure. in saying all of that, Rugby league is clearly not about individuals. Mm. And the Storm, as a team, it's a 50-50 game. 100% of this. You know, and, and those guys working to get like Welsh working with Grant might be better than Haas working with Walters. Mm. And so that's what makes this it's so interesting. And it's such a – if you ever wanted an example of rugby league being a team sport, this is the perfect game to watch. Because if Broncos play as good as the, they all can play, they should win quite comfortably. Yeah. But – that's probably not going to happen. Why? Because rugby league is more than individual talent. It's about standards. It's about playing for your mate. And that's what Storm fucking 
They've built that over decades. Decades of rugby league. They've built it. Um, My brain is telling me, is that pretty much repeating what you said? My brain is telling me Brisbane are going to win this. Mm. Brisbane are going to win this by two or more tries. Mm. But I just can't bring myself to tip them at the moment. I, I, I'm, I'm tipping Storm just, but I really don't know. Like if you took, if they were both wearing, they were both named X and Y team. Yeah. And you just watched them all year. You'd say Broncos should win and win well. Broncos should win easily. Yeah, um, correct. And yet, and I know some people were sitting there going, well, hang on a sec, Storm beat them all in the year. Um, I think they had two sin bin. It was a crazy, crazy match. Oh, that's right. Down um, there. And so, yeah, yeah, fair enough. But like, if you look at them as a total year, not just when they've played each other, but just the, what they've delivered on the rugby league field this year. I mean, there were periods there where we're going, mate, Storm are, are done. Yeah. Like they're not going to. So Also, Broncos have improved a lot this year. They've improved massively. Yet... There's so much more to rugby league than that. And that's yeah. what's so incredibly special about this Storm side and this Storm club is that they they defy what is expected every year. Mm. Every year it's, okay, now finally you write the Storm off. They defy it because they're, just, they're the best sporting franchise in this country, bar none. Yeah, absolutely. Bar none, best sporting franchise. And when I say best, my, I mean definition of consistently good. No other sporting franchise, maybe in AFL, I don't know, but no other sporting franchise, like put it this way. If you took an AFL team and put them in, let's say Brisbane or New South Wales, and they were the most dominant side in AFL mm. for, let's say Brisbane, put them in Brisbane. They were the most dominant side in AFL for 20 years. Yeah. We would be saying like, how is that possible? That's what Melbourne are doing. Yeah, they've gone to enemy ter territory. Like no juniors. Just after the whole Super League mess and have become this absolute They have no house. juniors. Yeah. They have no juniors. They, they've had five people <laughs> in the club's history that were born and raised in Victoria. That's incredible. And the fifth one came a week ago. on debuted last week. Yeah. yeah. So you got four. Yeah. And yet they are the most. So they're, as an organisation, incredible. Um but yeah, this Broncos side, I do feel like there's something different. Yep. A lot of people talk about their youth being a, a negative. I think it's a positive. Mm. I think that they haven't, they didn't play against Cameron Smith and Billy Slater and Cooper Cronk. They didn't spend the last four or five years just getting dominated by these immortals. So they don't. It doesn't mean yeah, anything to them. Psychological star, scars doesn't mean anything to them. Yeah. If anything, I actually think it's the past helps Melbourne get up for it rather than yeah. Brisbane get down for it. Yeah, I know, think probably. Melbourne go, oh, well, we can beat these guys because Bellamy's done it so many times. Whereas I don't think this this current crop, I don't think they're scarred by the storm hoodoo. I don't think it bothers them. I don't think they're going into games going, uh-oh. Mm. Whereas I think it's at the generation before of Broncos players that go into the storm going, going fuck. Yeah. No matter what we do here. Yeah, we can't even win at home. Yeah. This is a whole new breed. Like there's only – there's not a single player in that side that played in 2015 Grand Final. Yeah, exactly right. Corey it's, it's Oates was the last one. Yeah. And he's gone. He's not playing. He's not playing. Yeah. Like he's not gone, but he's, he's not playing. So, mm. yeah, I, I cannot wait. It's going to be incredible. Oh, I'm so excited. I think it's going to be a – look, in my – look, if I'm speaking freely and like no fear, I believe the Broncos should win by two or more tries. But – I'm the one that's scarred by the storm. So I'm like, <laughs> look, tight win, tight win. Yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm, going, I'm going storm, but I don't know. I'm just – and the best thing is I don't care who wins. So I'm, I just can't wait. I just cannot wait to watch this game. It really is the best way to go into finals footy. Oh, no, not the best way. Oh, you want your team to wait. Yeah, yeah I But agree. it's a good way. Yeah. Because you can just roll on in. And just watch bloody – like all the games are going to be good this way. Oh, especially – Maybe maybe Penrith Warriors. I don't know. I think Johnson being out kind of hurts Warriors there. But the other three games, mm. oh, I'm so excited for. Yeah, Penrith, Penrith versus the Warriors. Um, I just, yeah, I can't see him beating them. Like, look, rugby league, 80 minutes match. Anyone can beat anyone in a yeah. professional environment. If you're an NRL squad, you can beat, like, the Tigers beat full strength Penrith. But just a finals, Penrith, oh, man, it's... It'll be one of the greatest upsets of all time. Seriously. Oh, if Warriors beat the Panthers, it'll be iconic in rugby league. If Panthers didn't have that Cowboys game last week, I'd give the, the Warriors a little bit more hope, but they just they just tore the Cowboys to shreds, the Panthers. Because, like, if they had an SJ, I'd give them, obviously, way oh, more yeah, hope. Oh, yeah, bloody oath. But just without Sean Johnson, you know, I just don't know how they do it. It's tough. Against a, a red-hot... Fully fresh, injury-free, outside of Luai, 
team yeah. in the Penrith Panthers. Mm. Yeah, Just, yeah. I, I, I can't see the Warriors winning. I'd love them. Obviously, we'd all love for mate, them to win. It would be so such a privilege to watch something so great happen. Yeah. To see a Warrior side without their main guy go to Penrith mm. and get a win somehow, somewhere in a finals match yeah. and automatically be in a prelim yeah. and have a home prelim. Yeah. Oh. That'd be just wild. And, and I guess we spoke about it on Monday. The eighth place Warriors beat the first place Storm in 2008. So it can happen. It can happen. It's just the SJ out is what. Yeah, I know. It just smashes it for me. I just don't know how they're going to do it without Sean Johnson. He's a, essentially the Dallium player of the year. Yeah. It's like the Sharks without Heinz. Yeah, it's, it's... You'd go fucking, what they, are you they, doing? Yeah. How crazy is it that um, we didn't pick up this on Monday? I only picked up on it when I saw the replay that Cleary was their coach that day. Ivan Cleary. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> I saw that. That's crazy. That's insane. And to think that his apprentice, essentially, like Webster came and worked under him, mm. would go and have this great run with the Warriors. Yeah. Amazing stuff. Yeah. Um, so I think that, like, if I'm a Warriors fan, you know, obviously I hope and let's just hopefully they do something incredible. Yep. But I just focus in on next week because Bloody they're earth. most likely going to play either the Knights or Raiders. Yeah. Very winnable game. Yeah. Now, I'm, I would – I think the Knights will give them a run for their money and there might even be a world where the Knights could – like, of course there's a world where the Knights can win. <clears throat> but – it's a 50-50 game, I think. Yeah, that's a, that's a cracker if that happens. That's a, yeah. like the, the a prelim is they've got one foot in the door. They're at home. Yeah, their main man is rested. They, their CEO has come out and said that he would have played if it was a grand final or an elimination okay, game. Well, there you go. And it's at home, eighty minutes. You're telling me that Warrior side for eighty minutes can't be good enough to beat a Knight side? Yeah. Fucking oath, it Bloody can. Earth they can. Yeah, absolutely, it can. And yeah, then so they're in a prelim. So I'm with you. I'm, I'm with you. If I'm a Warriors fan, I'm obviously pray for a win this week. But yeah, dial in a week too. Yeah, and home semi, home semi. I um, mean, then the Warriors in a prelim. So that that yeah. means that they would go across to the Broncos and Melbourne Storm side. Yeah. yeah. Now look, it might be Sharks or Roosters that get into the prelim, but if it isn't the Broncos or Storm, what an upset that'd be. Oh, that'd be. Yeah, yeah, it should be though. Oh, well, it has to be. It has to be because like, whoever wins well, this one goes to it. It's yeah, one yeah. of them, yeah. It's yeah, going to yeah. be one of them. So, so if you're the Warriors, let's say you could be the Knights and you go across and you're going to face the Broncos or the Storm. Storm, yeah. Even though I have Broncos and Storm being a better side, they're not. it's not Penrith. No, it's definitely different. You know what I mean? Yeah. 80 minutes of rugby league. If Warriors were to go and beat the Broncos in Suncorp or go and beat the Storm, yeah. I wouldn't be going, oh, well, that's crazy. Mm. Not at all. Especially because, like, Warriors, Warriors' record against Storm, win-loss isn't great recently. Yeah. But they they always seem to just be in and around. Yeah. Well, we, drew, we drew against them when I was playing for the Warriors and, yep. and wasn't it wasn't at the best year for the Warriors. So it, they just have – there's something about the Warriors versus Storm that they seem to be able to – and, I mean, I know recently they haven't been, but they have history of beating them. Yeah, so absolutely. if they could just – that's what's so incredible about this situation with the Warriors. Like, when you really break it down – at the very least, and that's what's so important about a top four finish. Like, it changes everything. Could you imagine if Warriors were playing an elimination this week? Oh, and SJ was out. SJ was he'd out. probably be playing, but if he was out, you'd just be like, oh, they're gone. But also, like, they got full strength, and they're playing the Knights or the Sharks. Like, they yeah. could lose an elimination game. Yeah. Whereas this this is set up perfectly for them to make a grand final. You nev they're never going to have a path like this to make a grand final mm. other than, let's say, St let's say Storm just fell out of the eight. And let's say the only other way they'd be able to have a better path is maybe if the two best sides somehow ended on the same side and they would they finished like as in like Penrith were out of the four but yeah. they were the best side and then they lost to someone and they went across to the Broncos side. Whereas this one, the fact that they get the Knights, which even though the Knights have been incredible, very winnable game, then they go across not to the Penrith side because they already have played, already Penrith, played Penrith. They go across to the other side of two teams. It's it is set up for a grand final appearance. Yeah, like, I, I think the Warriors, even though I'm not tipping them this week, you're right, they're in a pretty decent spot. They're in a great spot, mm. a great spot. As I said, somehow get the – like not somehow, get the job done some against Knights, yeah. uh, in the Seven most five. likely Knights, maybe Raiders. Yeah. And See, then, if it's Raiders, I reckon Warriors will win by a lot. Yeah. And then so – then you go across and you just need 80 minutes of rugby league. Yeah. Just – just somehow, some way to beat Storm or Broncos. Even though I would say Storm or Broncos are the favourites there, it's not outrageous favourites at all. Not. Way crazier things have happened. Mm. And if you had said at the start of the year they're in this position, you'd be like, nah, you've, yeah. you've got rocks in your head.
Okay, now next to the next game. Um, this will be sh- uh, Ray- Sharks, Sharks versus Roosters. Roosters Sharks night, yeah. versus Roosters. Now, this is just such the up in the air. Look, I'm still tipping the Roosters. Yeah. I'm still tipping the Roosters. But this is a really interesting match because I do feel that each side poses like very specific problems to whoever they play in the next game. Mm. So the next team that they would play will be... Storm or, Storm or Broncos. And what's interesting is that each team, as I said, the Roosters against the Broncos, the Broncos towed them up mm. not that long ago. And the Broncos seem to have a game. And I know the Roosters have improved since then, but the Broncos withstood all the, I guess, tough stuff of the Roosters. And the Broncos' attack was just too good for the Roosters, whereas the Roosters' defense usually is good enough. Whereas a, the Broncos are so strong attacking-wise that they got the job done. Now... The Sharks, on the other hand, their attack is crazy too. So it could just turn into a points fest if they play the Broncos. Mm. Um, whereas if the, the Roosters, say, play the Melbourne Storm, def- both of their defences are very similar. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it, it, it actually has a lot of Im- impact on yeah. who will make that prelim. For sure. Because both teams – it's not like both teams are a similar version of themselves. One's just a little bit better than the other. No. The Sharks and the Roosters are polar opposites. Different. yeah. So they they uh, they oppose very different scenarios for whoever they're going to play in the next game. Absolutely, and I'd be back in Broncos and Storm to beat them. But geez, you, you want to avoid it. You want to avoid Sharks and Roosters. Well, it's, it's interesting because I'd be backing Broncos to beat the the Roosters because they've got that. But Bron- but Storm Roosters. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm not sure because Roosters have that gritty defence. So. You just don't know. Like they could turn up and somehow get the job done against the the Melbourne Storm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Whereas I I kind of feel like Storm versus Sharks. I think Storm win. Yeah. Sharks versus Broncos because it could be a point fest. You never know what happens mm. in those games. True. It could just all be momentum. True. Um. So really, really interesting what happens in this game. Look, I'm back in the Roosters, but I want the Sharks to win. Yeah. Because I just want them to get that off their back. For people to go, you know, oh, they just they don't turn up in finals footy. They yeah. can't get it done. They win this match. I don't think that they'll make their way to a grand final, but I do think it puts them in good stead for a progression as a club yeah, so they can say to themselves, okay, we didn't finish second this year, but we got into finals footy and we delivered in the first match. So next year we've got confidence heading into finals footy when we make it. Yeah, I agree. And I think, I think there's a bit of pressure on them because I think if they lose – it's a big step back from last year mm. and your and as you said that monkey wouldn't be off the back yet no so this is a really really important game for the sharks i think the roosters have had just a disappointing year as it is um i reckon it'd be more disappointing if the sharks lose um but yeah both these teams i think have underachieved this year so it's kind of interesting if you said at the start of the year that one of these teams would get knocked down in week one i would have said no it's insane to think that the roosters are in the perfect position to go on a run. I know. Because they have no expectations. <laughs> I know. If they bounce out this week, no one's going to say no one anything. Cares. Yeah. And it's like, oh, all right, well, at least they made it, yeah. whatever. They are, honestly, if you could create an environment for going on a run, they're in it. Mm. they got the best environment for a run of any side in the top eight. Yeah. Because they have the roster. They're slowly getting back to form, not near where they should be, but they're getting back to form. And no one expects anything. Yeah. So that that could you could not add anything more in ingredients to create a better environment to go on a run. Yeah, hundred percent. They got pressure. finals experience, premiership winning experience, coach premiership winning experience, origin experience, youth mixed with age. Plus, they're on a f- five game winning streak. You know, like it could not be set up better for the Roosters to get somehow to a grand final. Mm. Yeah, I agree. I and agree. then you get a rooster side in the grand final, and you go, well, fuck. <laughs> You look on paper and you go, are you telling me this team isn't a fucking fair shot at beating the Panthers? You're kidding yourself. Mm, You're absolutely. kidding yourself. Could you imagine <sighs> the Sydney Roosters somehow, some way, fucking, it's, it, you know what's going to be bizarre? Let's say they do make a grand final. What do you do if you're the Roosters? Let's say they make the grand final, they lose 24 to 12 to the to Penrith Panthers. Yeah. Do you go away and review your whole system and make all these changes? And or do you oh, or do you go away and go? We fucking made a grand final. Who gives a shit? Like whether we were late or early to the party, we're mm. at the fucking party. Yeah, it's a good question. I'd if if that's the case, I'd probably be like, they start these terrible starts of the year are kind of costing us. I get 
I guess we got to a grand final, but yeah, I, there's there's a few more problems there. I I, I don't think so. I don't think so. I, honestly, even if they made the grand final and won it, yeah, I would still be like these slow starts have to yeah, go. Yeah, same. Yeah, they just got to go. Somehow you cannot afford to be relying on other results and stressing every because the problem is is that the one year that it works, the years that it don't. It can hurt your recruitment. Mm. It can hurt your attention. It can hurt everything. Yeah. Um, but if they won it, you'd be like, well, why would you change anything? You just yeah. won a bloody grand final. That's all that matters. Yeah. To be fair, it only really has worked once. Like it worked in 2018, but they mm. had Cooper Cronk there. Yeah. And Teddy was the best player in the world at the time. Mm. So, you know, it, it hasn't really worked from the last few years. Yeah. And then we're thinking way far ahead. But oh, as I course. said, I do think that... <laughs> If you could set a world that was perfect for a run, it's the Roosters right yeah, now. Absolutely. On paper, best roster in the comp, essentially. Um, if not the best, the second or third best. Yeah, yeah I've already listed it all. It is, seriously. Now, on the Sharkies. I, I re- before we get on the Sharks, I reckon that the Sharks fan base are probably the most nervous this weekend. For sure. For sure. Or, yeah, because like, the Broncos get another bite of the cherry. Yep. But if they didn't, obviously, it would be the Broncos. Obviously, yeah. What's crazy is how much pressure is on the Broncos now. <laughs> Like, they, they came second. They got another bite of the cherry. But if we lose tonight, I feel like a lot of Broncos fans are going to be like, well, if we can't beat in this game, yeah. how are we going to win a grand final? Yeah. Um, so, I reckon uh, with the Sharkies, yep. it's just one of those situations where Hines can have a, a moment of greatness if he wants to. Not if he wants to. It's, that's different. Like, of course he fucking yeah, wants, he to. wants to. Yeah. But if it's going to happen, He's capable. it's going to be Hines having literally the final series for the ages. But also, it's going to take a forward pack to unearth some stars, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I think looking at the game last week against the Raiders, they finished really well, the Sharks. But I hope it was a bit of a wake-up call because they started – it's like they just didn't – it's like they just weren't there for the first half of the game. It's just their completion rate. I, just, <laughs> I know they spread the ball, but – in finals footy, you can't do it. Look what yeah. happened last year. Yeah, exactly. It was like, what, 31 to 30 in a finals game. Mm. It's like you can't have let 30 points in in a finals game. Yeah. Um, that, that's what's, I guess, the concerning thing is. But it's uh, uh, the thing that sucks for the Sharks is people would say, oh, no one's really expecting that much. But it's not actually about the expectation. It's about the charge that you can't play finals footy and you just can't play big mm. games. Yeah. That's the worry for the Sharkies is that they have this allegation from the rugby league community that against top eight sides you struggle and you're not good in big games. Yep. So it's not necessarily about making it to week two of the finals, even though that's a great thing. Yep. It's more about showing everyone mm. you can play really well in big games. Because I feel like if they win this game and then lose the next game, I feel like most Sharkies fans will be like, you know what? Yeah, sweet. Okay, we, we've proven we can do it. I think Sharkies fans are more worried about getting rid of that allegation than sure. they are about, you know, winning a grand final this year. Yeah. I, I don't think that a lot of Sharkies fans, I, I'm sure they feel maybe, yeah. but I don't think that's on their forefront of their mind right 100%. now. 100%. The thing in their mind would be, we can't win it. We've lost five finals games in a row, bundled out straight sets last year. This whole song and dance about the stadium. People forget there was a whole song and dance last year as well. And they played at their stadium and they lost to the Cowboys. Mm. If they lose again this week, that's going to be all the talk in the off season. Sharks can't win big games. There's a lot of pressure on the Sharks. Yeah. Anyway, on to the next game. Next game is Raiders v... Knights v Raiders? Knights v Raiders. Knights v Raiders. Um, Because I was counting then. I was like, are we up to the third or fourth? And I was (laughs) like, I I can't think of anything after Knights v Raiders. So I don't know. Anyway, Knights v Raiders. I'm worried for the Raiders. Yeah, me too. I know everyone's talking about the underdog. And and we talk about it too. Because that is what Ricky is going to be saying. Mm. We're the underdog. No one wants us to win. No one cares about us. Everyone's like, yeah, they shouldn't even be in the eight. I get that. I get that. But I feel like that can only take you so far. And I just don't know. I can't see the Knights rocking up being complacent. Mm. Like, even though they've been on a nine-game win streak, their last five or six years have been so bad and full of turmoil. I feel like they, even as players, you can tell, yeah. they're not getting ahead of themselves because no. they know how bad it is. And, and they know get. that it would have been said a lot this week. This is your first home final <laughs> since Andrew Johns played. Since 2006. I don't know if Johns played in the game, but like since he was playing, what I mean. Yeah. What I mean. Like that's, that would have been drilled in their heads. Like this is a once in a, 
not once in a lifetime, but like this hasn't happened in so long. Yeah. So don't be complacent. I, I think they're very, surely they're very aware of that. Uh, mate, and I just, look, nine games, great. But yeah. I, as I said, I don't, I don't, I don't look at that squad and go, they're going, oh yeah, we're fucking killing it. I nah. think that enough of them went through the tough times. I think so. And all of the headlines and Adam O'Brien's got to go yeah. and KP may never play again. And <laughs> Well, and it's funny how we say that. Like normally, like we talk about the Broncos, they've been through their turmoil, which was all this night's headlines. It was like two months ago. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. It's mental. And so I don't think they're going to head it themselves. And I, like, I just think the Raiders are missing too many troops. Yeah. And, and some of their key, like Jackie Boy, he's been solid in the centers, but... Are they going to really do a dent? If Let's say they do bring Croker in and they put Jackie at six. He may have a great game, but he's just been quiet this year. And yeah, I've, has, I've said yeah. this, you know, so many times. And it's, it's um, you know, I love Jackie as a player. He is truly one of my favourite players to watch because mm. he's rips and tears. But this year just hasn't really been that good for him. And I just look at that team I'm like, where else? Who else can do anything? Like, Jackie's really the only guy. Oh, it's, all, it's all on Jack. Yeah, yeah. He has to deliver. And if he's playing centre... Is he in a position to deliver? It's, he's in the Senate. I, I'm so against him playing centre this week. I think they need to – everything needs to be around Jackie yeah. White this week. I, I think I could – look, I could – I like him playing centre, but I would need more time of Frawley and Fogarty together. Yeah. Whereas yeah. like two or three games, I just don't know where they're going to build a combination to do that. And then they've got you – know, Rapana is obviously not a fullback. Um, Joe Tarpin has been outstanding this year. He's been incredible. He's an amazing player. He's such an amazing. And he, you know, it's almost a bit similar to the Adam Fenor Blake situation where because he's in Canberra, you don't they don't talk about him as much. But he won Player of the Year for him. Mm. Like he has been one of the best front rowers this year. I would mm. still have Payne Haas, um, Adam Fenor Blake, mm. but Tarpin is not far off. And I reckon he was probably up there with. You could argue he was the best front rower last year. Yeah, yeah, outstanding, outstanding. So. Um, and look, I get it. Like sometimes he plays 13, sometimes front oh, row, you know but look, mean. he's a fucking front row. Let's be real here. Um, but I just think, I think that you can already, well, in my opinion, you could already see the Raiders fatiguing Yeah. and you could already see that Ricky could only hold on to that grit and underdog for so long. Yeah. I just don't know whether they've got the energy anymore. Yeah. And they've, what? They've won one game in the last month. They're just, they're not in good form. The difference between last year and this year, I know they went down and beat Melbourne last year, but like, at least they weren't in this battle form last year. And it's just energy wise. Mm. I just, when I watched them play over the last month, it just looks like they've been so brave, mm. so courageous, so dogged all year. Like they haven't won a single game 13 plus or maybe one. <laughs> nah, zero. Zero. Yeah. Like, you know how gutsy that is and incredible, but these guys are human. Mm. Getting to a finals game where your intensity needs to go to a whole other level. Yeah. I just don't know whether they've got the energy to do it. And it's a credit to them that they're even here. It Absolutely. really is a credit. It's an amazing feat that with the side they have, with everything that's going on, that they're making the finals. But whereas the Knights, they don't look fatigued at all. Oh, they they look like they're just starting. They literally just, I mean, they didn't even have their players last week and they absolutely towed the boys yeah, up. Like it's, yeah. I mean, you go and you go back two weeks before that, they went down to Canberra and towed them up. Towed them up, yep. You know, yep. so at home, I don't know. I just, yeah, I think it's going to be a... Um, big win for the Knights but we'll yeah, see I tell you what I mean no you know what I, I'd be lying if I didn't say I don't want the Knights to win I love the Raiders I mm. love the milk I love the boys are legends mm. but I, I want the Knights to win I, I want just, the Knights to go on a right yeah, run it's that it's the it's just that time for, yeah. the, for the Knights I would love to see a Knights Broncos prelim oh, oh but then you don't get the Knights Warriors prelim well I don't yeah well if Warriors lose this week we're not going to get the Knights Warriors prelim anyway oh sorry semi-final semi-final well, Knights, if Warriors lose this weekend, then yeah. they could play the Knights. Yeah, because the Knights play Warriors. Yeah. So yeah, one of them so. go through. But yeah, they could still make oh, the prelim. Oh, so one of them will be in the prelim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Um, yeah. Oh, I don't know which one I want more. I love the whole Warriors situation that's going on. They've got to get to Melbourne, obviously. Yeah. But you know what? Probably rather Broncos Warriors prelim. But yeah. Knights just below it. Yeah. Just below it. Yeah. I don't want to... Yeah, because oh, that's because Melbourne got across the other side. Can you imagine a Melbourne Penrith prelim? Oh, I know. <laughs> I know. Oh, it's very, it's very possible. It's like a grand final. Very possible. Oh, so Sportsbet, um, they've released this these new odds. I've never seen it before, but it's called an NRL nine or something. Mm. And you can bet it's got every single combination that could possibly oh, happen. Really? So I, so I just did did one this morning, for example. Um, so I've gone. Um, 
Melbourne to win tonight, Penrith to win tomorrow, Sharks to win tomorrow, Knights to win Sunday, then you then New Zealand to win, blah blah blah. And then like all of them pay like anywhere between like 150 to like $250. So you can what? choose what combination. There's every single combination you can have. That's mad. Yeah, and that's on Sportsbet now. It's on Sportsbet now. And obviously you have to get on it now because it's going to disappear after the first game starts. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Get on it. Get yeah. on it. So what's it called? Uh, I'll talk. You get it up. Yep, yeah, sweet. That's so good. I mean, this wasn't supposed to be an ad, but let's turn it into an ad. Mate, yeah. get on your Sportsbet yeah. app. How good's that? NRL finals, pick nine. That's what it's called. And so you pick the results all the way to the grand final? Yeah. So it comes up with a, a little screen and it, you, you pick who you think is to win the comp. So just say, I say Brisbane. And then from there, there's all these combinations of every single game and of what would happen to wow. the Brisbane one. And you How good. Just chuck it. a sneaky five bucks on it. That's it. That's all you got to do. That's a fun bet too. Because you get so to ride, ride it all the way in, but it's not like a crazy, like you've chucked a five bucks on it. Yeah. It's all good. It's great. It's so great NRL feature. nine. Did you NRL say? pick nine. Pick nine. NRL pick nine. Go check that out, guys, because that sounds fun as shit. NRL, sorry. NRL finals pick nine. NRL's finals pick nine. Yep. Because there's nine um, games. But always gamble responsibly, guys. You win some, but you lose more. Cheeky little five, ten bucks, maybe a twenty bucks. Yeah, you've got the cash, maybe even a fifty bucks. Mm. But that's fun though. That is really fun. That's cool. It's cool. Cool little feature. Um, yeah. So finals footy. She's here. She is here, and it is uh, exciting stuff. Don't forget, guys. Make sure to watch all the finals on Nine Now. You can you can't beat the commentary and the analysis that Nine Now provides. It's live and free on Nine Now. Download the app or watch it on your web browser if you don't want to watch it on uh, TV. And it's great stuff, guys. As I said, all of the games. And I, I do believe that there is something about finals footy in Channel 9. Like, Oh, yeah. There's something about 100%. that. There's something about that. Up with. Um, so make sure to, uh, yeah, make sure to watch it on 9 now. Um, bro, I was driving. Obviously, I was speaking earlier about driving in. There's this new yep. feature on Spotify called AI DJ. Really? And it's pretty hectic. It is pretty hectic. I'll try and get it up so that you can hear like what they. So basically, what it does is is it's an AI DJ. I'll get it up. Mm. Okay, we're moving on. Next, I got some of the latest and greatest in hip hop straight off this week's A1 playlist. Something from Old Atari up first. And so what it does is yeah. it goes through it goes through your like your likes, yeah, and yeah. playlist or whatever, and it it. Honor Puts up the next song. Oh, really? Yeah. So it's like tailored towards. It's tailored you. toward. It goes through whatever you've listened to on Spotify. Yeah. You know, and then it will, it'll. It's a radio station, so every three, you know, songs, three or four songs, that guy will speak again and be like, "I'm just going through your old playlist, and you seem to like this person. Mm. I'm going to put, you know, three songs on from people that hurt, like her or him. Yeah. And also to other people, Love all, that. all them. Love and that. so instead of you having to create all this playlist. Yeah. It just keeps going forever. Like it's a never ending playlist. Really? But it like suggests you new things, but then also you can just go next, gives you your old school that you they know that you like. That is sick. I'm going to be on that immediately. Mate, it's so good because that's the one thing, like when you're listening to music, you're like, I don't know what to listen to. Mm. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Or you go to your old old uh, Facebooks and you're like, man, I listen to this so many times. Whereas this one, you just go, boom, put it on. And yeah, there are some, like, it's, it's not as accurate initially, but eventually it just gets, gets into it. this groove where it knows what song you want to hear and also introducing you to new artists. See, that's good because, like, for example, I the thing I use the most on Spotify is the artist radio. So, for example, 21 Savage Radio, and you click on that and then it's got a playlist, which is like a bunch of 21 Savage songs and a bunch of, like, related songs. I love, love that, like, not just 20, like Biggie Smalls, Eminem, whoever you want to do. But it doesn't really update that often. It's kind of just a big playlist. But if if that's a never-ending one, that's amazing. Exactly. And you're right, that's frustrating. Like you go over a week later, it's the same song and you get over it in in the the same same order. order as well, yeah. yeah. Whereas this, it just, every three or four songs, just re... And then you can press the AI Spotify button, it'll reset. Oh, I'm so so used to it's fucking so good. It's so good. I was thinking, if there's like one app, not just social media app, that you like, if if you've got rid of you'd be so filthy what would it be um because i was thinking i was thinking it's probably spotify for me no nah, youtube for me youtube yeah youtube yeah youtube because that has music in that if you need yeah, it that's true that's true and it has everything like every like the you reason why youtube is so good is that it's content um, is endless mm. Now, is it as high quality as say, well, it is now because actually you can rent movies, but let's just pretend you can't rent movies on YouTube. You can go to Netflix and there's only a certain amount of movies that you can watch. Mm. Whereas YouTube, you can watch a 10 second funny clip 
or a two hour hectic three hour four hour yeah like it's endless yeah you can keep yourself entertained with content forever on youtube so true yeah that's a great point i Maybe I'd change my answer now because I live on YouTube as well. Yeah, it's I so love good. It's so good. I, the only thing is, I think that their their recommendation isn't very good. Nah, it's so off. It's it's also like it's so like you watch one thing from one person and then it just spams you with their yeah. their stuff and you're like, oi, be a bit smarter. Like, like recommend stuff that's like that, but not that. Yeah. Um, yeah. But also sometimes I feel like it recommends two specifically as well. Mm. Like just because I watched this one kind of, you know, whatever it is, I don't want to watch just that for the rest of my life. Yeah. I think that like they need to get better at obviously recommending similar stuff, but also new stuff. Yeah. Because sometimes your YouTube playlist can just get, it's just all the same. It's all the shit that you, you watch, not new stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And, I, and you want to be, it's really hard to find new people yeah. that you like yeah. on that's YouTube. That's why Spotify is so good. Yeah. Because that's what they do really well yeah. is that algorithm that they use. Bloody algorithm over, overlords. <laughs> How bizarre is it that whoever thought, let's just say one man thought of the algorithm. It wouldn't yeah. be one person or one man or one woman. But like, think about the power that they've inflicted oh, onto God. the world. Like the guy that invented the Spotify algorithm, he has, he or she has changed the listening habits of millions and millions mm. of people. And that then changes their mood. Like imagine if he made one tweak that, okay, what he's going to do is he's going to introduce more aggressive songs to millions of people. Yeah. And, and so millions and millions of people without knowing it, begin to listen to more aggressive songs. Their mood becomes more aggressive. They become more angry. You know, like think yeah. of the ripple effect yeah. that that could have. And not just that, think of the money it's generated for like getting ads popped up here and there mm. or like, you know, businesses paying for certain ads to get popped up more, like adhering to likes and dislikes of what people click on. Mm. And then from there, those people see ads and then they click on that and then they get like all the money and rev like advertising that's created is ridiculous. Yeah, it's crazy. But I, I think it's, it's really fascinating the fact that these algorithms control millions of people's moods oh, yeah. like the false facebook algorithm the instagram al algorithm what they're suggesting to you now you could argue they're only suggesting to you what you already like but how do you know that certain i guess directions a bit like for example i believe that the internet has made us closer for sure but also more divided because sure. what happens is is that it's all based on likes, shares and clicks and all that so the more extreme views of everything get put in your feed because more people are engaged with them. Mm. And so all of a sudden you're in your own little echo chamber of extreme content because it's been fed to you and you're not seeing like nothing's, you know, when you're scrolling past something, you're going to stop at the extreme thing. You're not going to stop at the, you know, very mild, very, it's like when you're on the internet, you think everyone is an extremist. Mm. Then you go out in the real world, you could meet that same person you think is an extremist and be like, oh, they're pretty yeah, fucking normal, normal person, yeah. normal human being. Yeah. Now I'm not talking about real extremist guys. No. I'm talking about people that you you know might um, have certain views that you're like, man, that is so far away from where I'm sitting. And then you see them in person and you talk to them like a human being and they still have that view, but it's much more nuanced and much more, I guess, open to change and discussion. And like, I just think that the internet, the, the humanity side of things, just totally gone. Totally oh, gone. Sure it's Most people, like either side of the aisle, if you got them in a room to talk without any bullshit, without any, mm. you know, pretense and cameras on them or whatever, most people can find a common ground. Bloody earth, they can. Like yeah. it re really can. Because yeah. once you're in front of a human being, all the natural urges and all the, um, you know, the humanity of like, that's a human being in front of me with emotions, feelings, all of the subtle facial recognition that you go through when you see certain things that you don't even know you're seeing, subconscious yeah. things, that all comes into play. Whereas when you're on the internet, it's literally a fucking nobody, yeah. like that you just don't even, doesn't, it doesn't exist to you. Yeah, so true. It's a little profile picture. Yeah, so true. And, and obviously you're right. It's like you, you can't pick up tone or anything. No. Nah. No, nah, you can't, or, or reason. Yeah. Like, why do they think that? Yeah. Like, someone has an extreme view, okay, and you don't know whether that's because they're just a piece of shit, mm. or what if something really bad happened to them, and they can't, for, for the life of them, get out of the feeling of 
whatever view I like the extreme view I have of that topic, I can't disconnect my personal experience yeah. from that view, yeah. which is a very natural thing to have. Yeah. Now, if you spoke to them on the internet, you're not going to know about that past stuff. No. But if you s sat down with them and then they said that past stuff, first of all, you'd have way more empathy because you'd be sitting there going, fuck that. That's terrible what happened. Like, I totally disagree with your view on the, uh, the I guess, the, um, the fix for that. But I empathize with why you think yeah. like that. And then you fucking common ground, baby. Exactly right. Then you meet in the middle. You go, look, I understand why you think like that because that happened to you. But uh, on a broader scale, this is why this has to be this certain way because it's not just uh, anecdotal evidence. It's the boy. Anyway, and so that's what like algorithms, the effect it has had on humankind is, is seriously unbelievable. And then you think about it further and you're like, who has control of the algorithm? Who, who is intelligent enough empathetic enough, emotionally intelligent enough to make the call on what an algorithm should should or shouldn't be. No one is. No one, yeah. Like yeah. it's like who who um who governs the governors? <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Who who like we often get caught up with like, oh that's the law. And the law is this like external thing from us, this you know it, it's intangible. And so it it's almost mystical, like yeah. the law. It's it, it, this power behind that. Yeah. But it's literally just a rule a person came up with. Yeah. It's literally just something that a group of people came together and said, that's what we think should happen. And when you go back in history and you look at some of the laws, you're like, what the f This was just some corrupt people trying to stop trade, trying to keep a certain group down. Like, not all laws, for you know, for sure. But there are some laws like mm -hmm. that. And as soon as you realize that, you're like, well, who is intelligent and responsible enough to make these huge decisions. Mm. It's just, no one is. No one is, yeah. No one is. And so these algorithms, they're, they're changing billions of people's minds and thoughts. And yet like who, who, who is making those Who's decisions? Regulating this. And yeah. I'm not, I'm not some crazy conspiracy guy that's like, oh, they're all in this dark room together and they're going, we need them to think this. And I, look, don't get me wrong. There is definitely room for that. And that does happen. Yeah, definitely. But definitely it's mine more comes from a, a space of, this has just crept up on us yeah. and we don't know how to handle it. Yeah. No one sat in a room a hundred years ago and says, you know what, I'm going to create an algorithm mm. and then I'm going to hand it down to this person, this person, and then we're going to control everyone. I feel like it was more just technology went so far, so quick. Mm. And now we're sitting here going, what the fuck do we do? How do we fix this situation? And it seems so normal for us. Like so like, gr like just scrolling on Instagram, just it just seems like you're looking at a feed, but no, this has been, this has been tailored to change how you think. Or well, change how you think. That's the thing, though. Think. It hasn't been intentionally tailored to change mm. how you think, but the the parameters in which it, you know, sends you whatever you need to see, they're probably the wrong parameters. Mm. But then, what are the right parameters? Like the the parameters of the most in, like people like you, eighteen to thirty five year old males, stayed on that post for ten seconds longer than every other post. So we're going to put that to other eighteen to thirty five yeah. year olds. But how does that create diverse thinking? Yeah, yeah, true. It doesn't. It's just sending the same message to everyone. And all of a sudden, all people that are like me or you are thinking the same. Mm. Then we see another thing and we think the same again. Before we know it, we're seeing all the same thing and we, it becomes groupthink. Mm. And it's so hard to get out of groupthink. Whereas back in the day, it was more where you lived dictated the culture in which you were brought up in, you know, what was passed down through generation through generation. Whereas now it's more whatever algorithm you see. Imagine if everyone put their phones down tomorrow and like there was no, let's no, no social media, no internet, no, no connection like that. Imagine how quickly you would be refocused in to your community around you, to yeah. the human beings that actually matter in your life. Mm. The person down the road, your next door neighbor, the, the local cafe, that all of a sudden that would matter again and they wouldn't just be faceless people that doesn't matter anymore mm. because the internet has just opened the whole world to us. It's sure. just like double-edged sword where it's like the internet's been so good, so, so good, but at the same time, we've been handed the most dangerous weapon in the history of mankind mm. and we don't know how to use exactly, it. Exactly, yeah. Like even with nukes, at the very least, we know how to use it. Turn yeah. it off, don't use it. We know, we know what happens when you press that button. We all die. <laughs> We do not know what happens at the end of these algorithms. Mm. We don't. Like AI, for example. Oh. That's, that's, where we're we, that's where the algorithm is headed. We've now landed in AI. Yeah. And, and again, with nukes, even though we, you know, it would be great if they never existed, but they exist. But at least we know 
You press that button, oh. everyone dies. And it, if one gets dropped, a thousand are getting dropped. The whole earth ends. The, the algorithm and the AI, it's like, what ends? Where is the end? Yeah. Do we become slaves to machines in a thousand years? Like, maybe, maybe not. Does it help us? Maybe it does help us. Maybe eventually everything becomes easier and we, be, we live in a utopia. Mm. We don't know. But not, not only do we not, not know the end, we don't know what, what it's going to be like in a week, in a month. That's the thing. As soon as, if, as, soon as AI becomes sentient and conscious, we are fucked. Yep. Now, now the, the AI and the, the, the artificial intelligence, it may not do it immediately, but if, like, what, what command could you give the AI that you knew for sure wouldn't be the end of humanity. For example, if you said to the AI, your overriding command is do what's best for Earth. Yeah. Sounds like a very positive thing. Do what's best for Earth. What's best for Earth could be all of us dead. Yeah. It could be, it could, it could be in just an overpopulation where- Not even billion- overpopulation. Just humans add nothing but bad. Yeah. Um, or do what's best for humanity. What's best for humanity could be culling us to down to fucking a billion people mm. instead of seven billion people. Like, you, what what could you possibly say to an AI that would guarantee safety for humanity in the future? I don't know uh, what that would yeah. be. You know, and that's so you, you're going into a blind, yeah. a sentient being with the thinking power of every human that's ever lived for the entirety of our species, plus the power of the internet that can cover the world, even cover into space, really, because obviously radio waves and that can go into space. It is crazy Yeah, what we're walking into. Crazy. Whew, that was a lot. Rugby league. I hope Reese Walsh doesn't give away any, any Well, Reese Walsh <laughs> apparently doesn't know what, uh, what a um, who, who do? hoodoo is. <laughs> so, you know what? I like that for my fullback. That's if your good. fullback's saying, I don't even know what a hoodoo yeah. is, it's fucking great that he's such a good footy player that he's managed to get to the age of 20 and not what know what hoodoo is. And two, he doesn't know what a fucking hoodoo is. So he's going out there ripping and tearing, baby. Uh, that could be a Broncos win. Anyway, before we go, though, don't forget, go to Shoe Grab, $99. You spend $99, you get free delivery. So if you want some sneakers or some uh, active wear, Shoe Grab is a place to go, guys. If you love the Bloke podcast, if you love the Bloke network and you want to get you know shoes or active wear, go to Shoe Grab. If you support them, they support us. Support the people that support us. And Menu Log, don't forget, I'm sure you'll be all ordering some food tonight. If you're going to order some food tonight, make sure to use Menu Log. Use code Crichton to get free delivery on orders over 15 bucks. So basically, it's you spend 15 bucks if you went to Macca's. You can spend the same as what you'd spend to Macca's, but get it delivered to your door yeah, for free. For free. Best. So it's literally like going to Macca's, getting the same cost as that, but you get it to your door. And it does it on Macca's. That Macca's is on... Yeah, menu log, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's only KFC that's excluded. Only correct? KFC. Yeah. Um, anyway, the world's ending. AI's taking over. We'll go fuck ourselves. Thank you. Imagine what you could be buying instead. For free and confidential support, call the number on the screen or visit the website.